Hello, my name is Amantis. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be playing Chicken Police, Painted Red. If you'd like the opening song that I was playing earlier on, it is called I Knew a Guy by Kevin MacLeod. One of the things I love about Chicken Police Painted Red is, for sure, the soundtrack. So far it has some of the most beautiful soundtracks I've ever listened to in video games. Makes me want to replay the game later on when I'm done with this game. <laughs> yeah, just so that I can listen to the music non-stop in certain rooms and in certain situations. Anyway, let's get back to the story, shall we? Sonny, there's something else. Your car is here behind the building. Ursula covered it with a tarp. What? Why? She saw it in front of the brothel. And she also saw the madam's girls trying to take it apart. Furry gods. What did she do to them? Well, a couple of dames with guns are not enough to scare my dear Ursula, that's for sure. But relax. She didn't tear them to pieces. She just chased them off and got away with your car. You know, for once, that's wonderful news. Yeah, I wore my legs down to get here. Warmest regards to Ursula when she gets back, Doc. She may have saved our lives. <sighs> of course I will. Now, cluck off, will you? Ah, you're the best, Bubo. I know. Will you kindly get lost? Well, just a personal recap. We are now at Bubo's place to get stitched up. Also to get some extra information on the people who have just tried to burn our feathered friends. And as you can see, we have we'll probably have some extra information from on Bubo. He helped us on occasions in the past. Okay, we're gonna go and visit a different location. So this, the Hop Dog is the place that we need to go at this point to progress with the story because Zip uh, seems to be about to get done in. But on the other hand, there are some other spots to go to, for example, the Zara Club and Weekend House, plus the Sweltering Nile. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to first head to the, to the weekend house. We'll see what happens while we still can visit this place. Ah, we're busted, boss. Yeah, the boys were quite fast, I admit. Ah, what are we gonna tell them? Any chance we were just joyriding around here? Not much. That's why they're gonna believe it. You think so? Just watch and learn, cub. Well, as you already know, there was a murder that we reported in one of the in a previous session, and right now we have our the entire half of the police department at the weekend house. So we have Bosco over here, and we have Phyllis and his little friend, little spiky friend, in the cop car for the claw of the police department. And let's take a look at our notes first, because we seem to have gotten some notifications on the notes. So what we're going to do is going to look at, take a look at Bosco. 
Uh, no, apparently not. But we do have some... Maybe we have some information on Mason. They're assigned to secure the scene at Natasha's weekend house. I don't think they're very useful, but they at least get suitable garden gnomes. Oh, I love this game. Also, let's take a look at Phyllis. Phyllis. The hedgehog. A real little ass plug. He's too small a fish in the ocean to be worth bribing. Phyllis and Royce are assigned to secure the... No, oh, this is the same thing. All right. Let's take a look at Bosco. Actually, we'll take a look at... We'll take a look at these guys first. These two, again, of course. Who else? Would you be happier if it were Moses and Plato? Yeah, you're right. We're lucky. There you go. Let's take a look at the cop car. Out the tires, boss? What the hell's gotten into you, Marty? Huh? Should we blow out the tires, boss? What the hell? Huh? Should we blow out the... What the hell's gotten into you, Marty? <laughs> huh? It's okay. Uh, Trip click it. Let's talk to Phyllis. Hey, boys. I see you're working hard. Hey, what about you? What the hell are you doing here? And we were just driving through when we saw the party. And who are you trying to feed that bullshit to? Yeah, we're not eating that shunny. This isn't your neighborhood. So, out with it. Why are you here? Pull back the spikes. What's going on? Just fill us in, fella. <laughs> oh. Young girl, around 25 to 30 years old. Pretty? Some kind of doe or something? Impala, you moron. Aye, she was an Impala indeed, Phyllis. Wait, how do you know that, Marty? One of the officers mentioned it. Don't blow your top, okay? Carry on. We don't have all night. So, the girl was naked. But there's no trace of predation. We don't even know how she died. It's the coroner's day off. Huh. Another thing that only happens in Clawville, huh? Which reminds me, what are you even doing here? We're securing the area. Yeah, I can see that. I beg your pardon, Marty. I said, have a nice time doing nothing, boys. I mean, securing. All right, so we don't seem to have a lot of information from the spiky members of the police department. Let's take a look at Bosco. Here's the alpha pup. Hey, watch out, he may bite you. No, Bosco's not like that. He's as happy as a dog with two tails. Ah, uh, we're criminally funny. Yeah, in a better world, we'd be in jail for it. And let's have a word of Bosco. Sorry guys, crime scene. You can come in if you want, Marty. But unfortunately, Sonny counts as a civilian. It's alright, Bosco, we understand. Anyway, I don't think whatever's in there would surprise us much. What? Why'd you say that? Oh, nothing, nothing. We've just heard what's going on. It's one ugly case. Yeah, she was young and full of life. At least I think so. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm too old for this shit, you know. What are you doing here anyway? I heard there wasn't any predation here. It's a simple murder case, isn't it? Yeah, it would be. But the city's too busy tonight. We simply don't have enough officers on duty to cover everything. Sound familiar? Yes, it does. So everyone's doing everything, eh? And nothing. Not what they should, anyway. But you know, I'm not even here. I just stepped in to take a look at the case for the boss. I'm already heading back to the PD. We just happen to be around here, too, so uh, we'll be on our way now. See you soon? Yeah, afraid so. It seems that we can't really go in either. Anyway. What the hell are you doing here? We were just uh, driving around in the neighborhood, uh, you know how it is, voluntarily patrolling. Furry gods, do you think I'm an idiot? All right, all right, maybe a little bird told us. We got a scoop, but we can't tell you anymore. Why do I have the feeling that you're gonna end up in deep shit tonight? Maybe we're already in it, pal. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Or the extra dialogue is pretty fun to listen to. Let's see if we can get some extra dialogue from Phyllis. Why do you seem so guilty to me, boys? Even your combs don't look right. 
<laughs> You're imagining things again, Phyllis. You must have stood out in the rain for too long. You need a nice hot cup of joe. Change the subject, are we, Rooster? We're keeping an eye on you, you know. Wow, that gave me the shivers. You too, Sonny? Now that you mention it, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, well, it seems that there was nothing much to do aside from take another look at the word here. The rain's not gonna wash that off, I'm sure. No, it won't. Not for my mind, anyway. Okay, so let's... Okay, now that we're pretty much done with this area, we can hop over to... Not the hop dog yet, because we're not quite ready for that. Okay, we can either head to the Zog Club, or we can head to the Sweltering Nile. Let's go to the Zog Club first. Well, looks like the party's over. Yeah, it looks like it. And just when I was starting to get into the mood. Damn it, I thought I was gonna see you shake a tail feather tonight, boss. Yeah, let's not go that far. Okay, we have a couple of characters here. We have the ladies yeah, standing at the entrance. The bouncers are gone. And we have Wart over here and Lewis. Probably his regular patronage. Alright, let's take a look at the ladies. Hello, ladies. Not even what happened to us at the brothel and on the burning ship discouraged you, huh? On the contrary, Sonny. I haven't felt this much alive in a long, long time. Alright. You have five minutes, then we're leaving. Thanks, Dad. But I'm not gonna talk to them. You know me. I only conquer from afar and only in my mind ever since Laura turned my head and my world upside down. What a lucky woman, eh? I'm the lucky one. That's for sure. Okay, so we've seen the ladies. Let's, let's talk, talk to Mort first. Oh, what? Fuck me. I really don't need this. We don't have to talk to him. He's blind. He's not going to notice us. If only we were that lucky. But he can smell chickens from a hundred feet away. And we can just start to speak to him. I could already smell you boys. Ah, hello, Morty. What's up? Are you lost, old lizard? Me? Lass? <laughs> no way. If I'm not mistaken, your rickety little shack isn't this way, Morty. It's uh, miles away from here. Don't you worry about me, you overgrown eggs. I know where the road's taking me. Jeffy uh, threw you out again, huh? Don't you worry about that either, pal. <laughs> That little bastard. All right, listen, Mort. I'll talk to Lewis for you, okay? Luckily, he's right here. Don't bother because of me, sonny boy. He's nothing. I can walk. No worries. I just want your legend to live on, lizard wizard. Yeah, so we have some new personal info from Mort. Poor Mort got lost and looks like very much like he can't go home or he doesn't want to. And we told Lewis to find a room for him. And of course Lewis just has to be right next to Mort. There he is again. Good old Lagrasse. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? What? Not calling him by his real name. Lamar or Lawrence is okay. Laszlo, maybe. But Lagrasse? <laughs> alright, alright, I admit it. I know that's not his name. He's Louise, right? Okay, I don't care anymore. I'm done. Alright, let's have a word of Louis. Hey, Louis. Here again? I just left something here, Sonny, but nothing important. Are you sure everything's alright, Louis? You seem, uh, distracted. I'm fine, S -S Sonny. Don't you worry about me. What are you doing here anyway? You look quite b b battered. Now we got both hot and cold tonight, literally and at the same time. But we're alive, and we're hoping maybe we can find Natasha here. I'm so sorry, Sonny. I haven't seen her since her performance. 
Well, thanks. Uh, keep your eyes open, all right? And my e e ears. Okay. Let's talk to him again. Listen, uh, Lewis, uh, I need uh, some help. Uh, a favor. S -s Sonny, you know, for you, a a anything, my f friend. Five times a day, even. Okay, okay, I deserve that. So, how can I ha ha assist you again? You know old Morty, right? Uh, uh, uh yes, I, I know him. <clears throat> Indeed. I know he's not a saint, and he doesn't smell like flowers. His manners are disgraceful. And he drinks a lot. He's friends with weirdos. And he's in and out of jail. So we know he's not an easy character, but he has nowhere to go. And he is an old friend. Or something like that. So, he ne ne needs a room, right? You guessed it, pal. Well, no problem, t t t gentlemen. I can ha handle that. Thanks, Lewis. Again. I don't know how many times. Much obliged. Don't mention it. One day I'm gonna a a ask you for a favor in return. Anything, Long Ears. Oh, nice. Achievement unlocked. Golden Heart. Let's take a look at what, what we got in the new information of Lewis. Lewis helped us find a place for Old Mort. No matter how weird he is, this rabbit's heart is in the right place. Yes, well, well, it seems old Fumpa likes to kill time in a very da 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 luxurious way. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's see anything else that we need to do over here. Probably not, but. I hope we're not gonna be on the front page of tomorrow's paper. Well, it depends on the headline. Could be the legendary pairs back together, or the two roosters take down the Wessler Empire. Or. The naked bodies of the once famous chicken police were found dead, washed up on the banks of the Times River. Eee, enough, enough, I get it. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep it real. Gee, thanks. Okay, and we've got... You know, sometimes I feel like none of this is real. Like we're living in a movie or something. What makes you say that? It's like our actions are scripted. Like we're doing what's expected of us instead of acting rationally, even if it's something totally insane. Well, Marty, maybe you're right. But we're the directors and the protagonists of that movie. At least I hope we are. That's for sure. If we weren't, we'd be long dead. Yeah, that's true. Okay. We been here we've already talked about the newspaper and probably not maybe we'll take another look at the poster you know when you showed me that flyer I didn't think you were gonna drag me into a mess like this boss bird I'm gonna be honest Marty I had a feeling if we got into this the sky was gonna fall on us that's why I needed you someone who who can take care of you yeah something like that that's honest coming from a selfish bastard and a jerk. Thanks, boss. Okay, let's see if we can look, in at, look at a poster another time. It all started with that innocent flyer. Life is strange, all right. Okay. Let's go and move on. Okay, we've been to... We should go to Mullen's new stand as well. Sauntering now. Let's go to the newsstand. Look at what the wind of the sea dragged in. Our girlfriend in the flesh. I can't believe it. Is this guy everywhere? The gull sees farthest to flies highest, Marty. Yeah, that guy's never given up. That's clucking sure. And we're going to talk to... Timothy, if you remember, he is a reporter. Let's take a look at him first. Let's get this over with. He's not so bad. Just have to get used to his style. You had ten years to do that. Nine, and it wasn't enough. Don't panic, Sonny. You have around five good years left, maybe six before you fly up to the heavenly chicken coop. So you can still succeed if you try hard enough. 
Just shut up, Marty, please. Okay, let us speak to him. Hey there, Timster. Long time no see. Hey, boys. What a lovely surprise. Do you also have a deja vu, Sonny? It's like all of this had already happened, isn't it? Yeah, now that you mention it. I, I wasn't following you, boys. I swear. We never said you were, Timbo. But what exactly are you doing here? It's a little far away from Roachtown. Uh, uh, okay, okay, I confess. I was following you. But I simply had to know what this is all about and how it's gonna end. It's my job, after all. But you have to understand, pals. We're not your pals, Tim. And I'm telling you for the last time, get the clock off our backs, or it's gonna end up a lot different for you than you think. Ah, that's harsh. Even from you, Sonny. Did something happen? Did you get dragged into something personal? And on New Year's Eve again? I mean, what's the chance of that? Bloody New Year's is back? Is there a connection between the two? I, I, what happens if it reappears again? Make him stop, Marty, or I'm gonna twist his beak off. Hey, uh, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, my beak is sealed, and I'm gonna keep it low. Very good. You're not so stupid after all, Tim. You must have been just pretending. <laughs> uh, that, that's a good one, Sonny. <laughs> Timus V sounds very nervous. Let's take a look at the taxi sign. Taxi company for the upper class only. Politicians and gangsters. At least we now know who the taxis are for. Send it a, have another word of Timothy. I'd be grateful if you didn't follow us anymore, Tim. We know you're a veteran scribbler, but where we're going, I'm not sure you'd make it out alive. Uh-oh. Well, that sounds rather irresistible, Sonny. You couldn't have made it more tempting for him. Oh, shut up, both of you. Okay. Uh, okay. Seems that Timothy's gonna be following us no matter what. Okay, let's talk to Mullen. You know, since Chickhood, everything's changed around me. Except... Hercule Mullen and the stand? Exactly. Mullen is eternal and unchanging. Maybe he's just an ideal. And ideals don't grow old. Or maybe he's one of the great wild ones in mortal form. We may never know, Marty. Have we asked him? Okay, we have quite a lot of questions we can ask Mullen about. Let's have a talk to, with him first. Ho ho! Is that the chicken, please? Hello, Hercule. Good to see you here. <laughs> I'm always here, lads. The sun shines, the rain falls, and Hercule Mullen sells newspapers. Just like that, Martin. Now listen, uh, Hercule. Wait, 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 sonny boy. Let me guess. Maybe, um, I don't know. Ah, I got it. You need some information. <laughs> you guessed, Uncle. How did you do that? Years of practice, sonny boy. <laughs> now, tell me, lads, what's the matter? We're just sniffing around a bit, Uncle Mullen. You know us. You just can't sit still in your asses, can you? <laughs> it's all right. So, tell me, what would you like to know? Uncle Mullen helps where he can. Thanks, old pal. Okay, time to do a couple of questioning. We already asked about this Libin Whistler. And uh, let's go and go down the list as usual. What a night we're having. We even ran into Bubo. And you're still alive? <laughs> Give praise to the great wild ones, lads. <laughs> we do. What's going on with the old owl? He didn't tell us much about himself. Oh, I hear the old owl's doing quite all right, since more and more cops step outside the line and more and more gangsters shoot themselves in the foot. Busy days, huh? Ah, uh, something's coming, lads. It's in the air. And I can feel it in me beaver bones, too. Clover is boiling. Yeah, we feel it as well, Uncle Mullen. Yeah, we're gonna go ask about Philmar. We managed to run into Philmar, too. Good old Phil, huh? I've heard he's not been doing so well of late. He didn't look so good, that's for sure. At the age of the private eye is over, lads. Now animals either sue each other or turn to the local crime lords. 
Only jealous or betrayed housewives remain for private detectives. Phil would never admit to that. He's too much of a romantic. Are we still talking about Phil, <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about Timothy Saltwater. What the hell is Tim doing here? Uh, you're still angry at him, then? He's not really a bad fowler, and he simply idolizes you. Be gentle with him. It's not adoration. It's an obsession. And I can't bear obsessive people. Then how exactly can you bear Martin? Hey, old man. The exception that proves the rule, right? If I'm obsessed, then what are you, boss bird? No, that's different. I have no other choice but to be with myself. The toughest prison on the planet, right? <laughs> Get a room, you two. And we're gonna ask about Madame Zivas. Pretty much a good person to ask about her. Listen, Hercule, what do you know about Madame Zavas? Why do I have the feeling you're not interested in her girls? Because you know us, Uncle. I hope you didn't mess with her. The old Cayman has a rather bad reputation, to put it mildly. <clears throat> Crocodile. But you're right. We shouldn't have messed with the old gal. She set fire to a ship with us in it. <laughs> Boys, I've heard she loves drama, but that is a whole other level. Yeah, right. We barely got out alive. What else should I tell you about her, then? Maybe try not to anger her, if that's possible. <laughs> Thanks. Good advice. <laughs> I see everything's like it used to be. <laughs> yeah, if only my back was the same. Huh, you're telling me. All right, it seems that we've asked everything we wanted to ask to Mullen. Let's have another word of him. Was there any movement around here? I mean, in Clawville? Well... They say there was some kind of trouble at the PD because good old Malloy had drunk himself into oblivion. <laughs> the Egypt. Blood boils fuming, of course. And there was talk of a murder in the rich district. Flowerville, yeah. We already know about that, unfortunately. I'm sure you know more than I do. It's a suspiciously quiet night, if you ask me. At least for a New Year's Eve. Calm before the storm. Something's brewing. I can feel it in me old beaver bones, and that signals three things perfectly every time. Bad weather, big trouble, and the wrath of me beloved wife. <laughs> Thanks, old man. We'll keep our eyes open. You do that. Okay. Mullen's car. Let's take a look. Mullen's car. Ancient, but kind of beautiful. Like the old beaver himself. Hmm, let's take another look at Chandler's. I wonder if they've got the entire Chicken Police series. It, not that I give a cluck, of course. But... Uh, but you kind of still do. The Quarrel Clawville Chronicle. Let's take a look. The Chronicle either put the Chicken Police on a pedestal, or it was gnawing on our drumsticks. Mostly thanks to our dear friend, Timothy Saltwater. We made it much easier to sell the paper until the public got bored. At least we know that Timothy's been writing for the Clawville Chronicle. Oh, usually about the chicken police in the past. All right, let's go to a different location. Nope, not the hop dog yet. Let's explore. Okay, we've still got some time. We can go to the sweltering Nile. Mm, Sonny, you sure they'll welcome us here? No, they won't, but I don't care. Oh, ho, ho. This new Sonny. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. <laughs> this diamond is staring at us, the mural lady. You know, since the incident with the burning ship, I see these girls in a different light. No wonder. These demons are capable of anything. For sure, Sonny. For sure. Hey, I didn't mean it like that, okay? Be professional. Hard as stone. You're right. Wounded, tough, stone-hard cops. That's right. Uh, dog dame bird fella. Door here. I have a feeling we don't fit in here. Well, we did just crawl out of a river after escaping from a burning ship. But these furies happened to set on fire. 
Exactly. So that means we deserve some premium compensation. Don't even think about it. Killer angels of pleasure. Should we talk to Miss Diamond? Our little actress. She was good. She deceived me too. But don't forget, Marty. These girls are capable of anything for them, madam. That is so true. All right, let's talk to Miss Diamond. Hello, miss. Gentlemen, I... Oh, don't worry, miss. We're not here to arrest you. Though I admit the temptation is high. I... I just was... Uh... We know, doll. You did what the madam told you to, right? Please, don't be embarrassed. It's not your fault. Hey, Marty, you're not gonna propose to her, are you? Please, gentlemen, this is very embarrassing and unpleasant for me. What do you want here? Are you tempting fate? Do you want to die? If we wanted to die, we just had to let the ship burn. You know, the one you put us into. I had nothing to do with that. It was Ibn Wessler's goons. Wessler's goons? Did they knock us out too? No, that was us. The girls. But we had no choice. I can't tell you more. Tell us this then. Is the madam here? Yes. But I'm sure she wouldn't want to see you. You have to understand that. We'll see about that, sweet pea. Thanks for the help. But I... Well, at least we now know that the madam is here. The madam Zavaz. Let's see if we can talk to this Lemur lady again. Killer angels of pleasure. Nope, not quite. What about this bird fellow? Maybe it's just a statue. I swear he was blinking before. Maybe it's just a statue. I swear he was bl <laughs> Okay. And let's go and go for the door. You think this is a good idea, Sonny? We're gonna make the crocodile even more angry. Stay outside if you want, Marty. I don't care. Yeesh, okay. Okay, boss. I didn't say anything. The end is nigh. The dead walk among us. Uh, greetings to you too, madam. Are you surprised to see us? I must admit I am a little. But I also must admit I'm relieved. Yes. Relieved? Wasn't it you who put us on a burning ship by any chance? No, it wasn't me, Mr. Featherland. Though I can't deny my part in it either. How comforting. Look, Mr. Featherland, your investigation clashed with my business and my personal interests. I couldn't let it slide. That's all there is to it. Nothing more. You're expecting any other explanation in vain. You really are cold-blooded, aren't you? Not my fault. I'm a crocodile. It has nothing to do with you being a crocodile, madam. Whatever you think. So, what can I help you with, gentlemen? Okay, we can probably ask her a couple of questions. We'll look at her first. So, the legends are true. Let's speak with her. Before you alert your wildcats, we're not here to arrest you, ma'am. We're not even here to confront you with anything. Why then? To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? I simply want to know why. The answer's frustratingly simple, Mr. Featherland. You'll be disappointed. Try me. I have a contract with Mr. Wessler. And your investigation infringed certain terms of that contract. That's all. Contract, huh? Is Natasha the subject of this contract? You sold her to Ibn Wessler, right? That assumption is offensive. So? I'm not going to answer that, Mr. Featherland. No. I knew it. You know, sister, you could be a famous crocodile. You're still just a snake. And I hope snakes will forgive me that I mentioned them in the same sentence as you. I'm truly sorry you feel that way, detective. Maybe one day your opinion will change. Okay, it seems that we have a little bit of extra information out of Madame Savas. You know, Mr. Featherland, I was growing rather fond of you two. 
I'm sorry. Don't take this the wrong way, but we don't need your sympathy or your pity, Zavos. Just take care of yourselves when you finally face Mr. Wessler. He's much more dangerous than you think. I hope you understand. We're pretty skeptical about your advice, madam. And at least we know that Madame Zavos and Wessler are in some kind of contract. Okay, that's probably going to be taking us to where the story is going to take us. We've been to every location so far. Okay, let's head over to the hot dog and see if we can stop the goons from doing some terrible things to Zip and the hot dog. Damn, we're late. I don't see him anywhere. But that jerk's here. Yeah, the famous scribbler Tim in the flesh. He must have seen something. And because he's here, he must have caught a whiff of a serious case. We should interrogate him. Oh, let me be the bad cop, boss bird. Permission granted. Yes. No. It seems that seems that he's gone. But what we can do is we can take a look at Timothy again. Scribbler Tim, second-rate journalist and first-rate ass kisser. He's a huge fan of the chicken police. I'll have a speak. I'm gonna speak with him. Hey, Timbo, my old pal. Hey, well, hello, boys. W what a lovely welcome. You're not scared to see us, are you? Who? Me? <laughs> what are you thinking? I I'm always glad to see you working. Especially together like this is the legendary chicken police. What the hell's going on here, Tim? That's exactly what I was thinking. You see, what the hell could have happened here, right? Very strange, indeed. Where's Zip, Timbo? Keen observation, boys. Because that's the most exciting thing about the story. Let me guess. A ram and a bobcat appeared and took him with them. Well, uh, you could say that if it happened, but it didn't. Then what? <laughs> Isn't it great? Here's the twist. Start talking, Tim, or we'll have to see if you can really fly. Come on, Sonny. I was supposed to be the bad cop. Shut your beak, Monty. Hey, hey, quit playing tough, will ya? You know I'll help you even if you don't threaten me. I always do. Mostly. Stop babbling. Just answer the question. Okay, we have to ask function. That's available to us. We can ask about the ship, Madame Zavas and Zip Murphy. Let's go down, as always. Have you seen anything weird around the river? You mean the smoke and burning ship? Exactly. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Oh, what a liar. He's probably seen it. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about Madame Zavas. What do you know about Madame Zavas, Timothy? What's the old hag up to these days? I only know what everybody does. She's rich, she owns a brothel, allegedly she used to be a spy, and she's an enthusiastic supporter of the Crown and the Royalist Party. What else? Well, I haven't heard anything else, I swear. She's surrounded by secrets. She was a spy, you know. Although... Yes? A little bird told me she's been entertaining quite a lot of foreign guests recently. I mean, real high-quality VIP guests. Who? From where? Well, I don't know, but allegedly, she's welcomed patrons from Stavonia, Averia, and even Nautica. Basically from everywhere that matters. And? Well, that's all. You know I can get into everywhere, but even I give the Nile a wide berth. Those wild girls are capable of anything protecting the madam. Trust me. Yeah, we've noticed. Okay, at least we know that the, there have been a lot of foreign guests that have been entering the brothel. Alright, let's talk about Zip. So, what about Zip? I'm telling you, I don't know. He was already gone by the time I got here. Why are you still sniffing around? Uh, I was uh, trying to make that fellow talk over there. What, the old fly guy? You speak insect? What if I do? I'm educated, you know. 
All right, Tim, my patience is gone. It's time you start singing like the songbird you are. Hey, that's seabird. Okay, okay, back off. We're old friends, aren't we? Exactly. That's why I haven't smeared the walls with you yet. Ouch. Ay, ay, ay. So we can do a little bit of questioning with Tim. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Here's... I'm pretty excited to find out what we can ask and some of the questions and replies that we're going to get. All right, let's go. Timbo's a douchebag, so it's not hard to draw the truth from him. Okay, so he is a douchebag. <laughs> and he is currently at neutral. All right, let's ask. So what the hell are you doing here? So what the hell are you doing around here, Timbo? All right, I confess, but you'll be surprised. I was looking for you, boys. The whole town's talking about you. Really? I'm swelling with pride. Everybody's whispering about the chicken police being back together again. And that you've already turned the whole city upside down. Great news. What else do they say? That you've threatened Ibn Wessler's sweetheart Natasha, then trashed Madame Zabas's brothel. Hard stuff. Really? I'm not surprised. Oh, and the best! You set fire to a ship, too. Yeah, right. Ah, and one more thing. A poor girl was found dead at Natasha's place after you visited there. Is that so? And you believe all that? Well, I'm a journalist, Sonny. It doesn't matter what I believe. Yeah, right. Okay, we have a new impression, and which is watchful. And have you seen anyone sniffling around, sniffing around here? And why were you looking for us here, of all places? Okay, so what we're going to do is... Uh, either or, I think, will be good. We can, we can go with second one. And why were you looking for us here, of all places? You offend me, Sonny. I'm your biggest fan. I knew the hop dog's going to be on your list. So it was a lucky guess. Uh... Something like that. And I'm wasting time here often anyway, so I had nothing to lose. And here we are. And then there is the first one, so we're not following us by any chance. Out of it to him who squawked. We've got... You know, he is a little bit in a, per, in a positive area. Let's go with the second one. Out with it, Tim. Who squawked? Well, any decent journalist has connections everywhere, Sonny. So have I. So? You don't think I'm gonna betray my source? Do you take me for a rat? Sorry, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. I, I have no problem with rats. Okay, we've had a little bit of a positive detective meter. Just ask it. We can only have one question. What happened to Zip, Tim? Okay. When I arrived here, the hop dog was already closed. Zip wanted to shoo me away, but I managed to persuade him to talk to me a little. Uh, we're old friends, Sonny, you know? And uh, I have this personal charm. Yeah, right, the uh, charm. Get to the point, Timbo. Uh, okay, okay. So, he was totally crazy. I've never seen him like that before. He was flustered, flailing, and talking absolute gibberish. He must have said something, since you're such great friends. Well, he just said he'd go to the only place where there are even bigger scoundrels than those that are after him. Really? I can guess what he meant. I didn't have a clue. Anyway, after he closed the dog behind me, and then the cops came and took him away in handcuffs, I came to the conclusion that all of this makes no sense. Zip, you clever son of a bitch. Why? Ooh, what is it? Oh, tell me. You just keep your beak out of this, Scribbler. I think I've got an idea about what our little friend's up to. Timbo loves to brag, and it's easy to approach him through his ego. Best if we ruthlessly exploit that. Okay, so Z Zip might have had the idea that he was going to get beaten up by Wessler's goons 
So what he probably did was to get the police to arrest him, just so that he would stay safe in the police station, rather than rather than just stay around. Okay, so at least we know that Tim is a brag. What's a braggart? Heard any juicy gossip today? Looking at a new front page article. Got nothing to do to stir up trouble. We'll go with the first one. Let's do stroke his ego a little bit. Heard any juicy gossip today, Tim, my friend? Natasha performed her new song tonight. It was a blast, I heard. And a poor little Bambi died. Oh, and a ship was seen burning and sinking on the times. But you already know that. Not only know it, we even felt it. That all? But it could fill a full issue of the Clawville Chronicle. Isn't that enough? It's more than enough, Tim, old pal. And he's a fan. And then it's how did you get rid of the cops? Those two cops who were they? Who oh, told you were working together again? You were so well informed. Tell me about Madame Zavas. Yes, we're going to go with the second option. As you're so well informed, Timster, tell me about Madame Zavas. Well. They say she's kind of angry because someone trashed her brothel. Oh, and that someone was allegedly you and Marty. Yeah, you already told us. Good story. Anything else? With a little more truth in it. Allegedly, Ibn Wessler's men were seen around the brothel. I have a hunch that they were the same two guys that came here, too. Gee, that may even be true. And then we go with this one, since this is the only option. Timbo, you pay attention to everything. Did anyone else come here? Besides the coppers? Yeah, a ram and a bobcat, in fact. But you just told us it wasn't them. What? Wasn't them what? I didn't say they took zip, because that's not how it happened. Don't make me mad, Tim. We're really not in the mood for this. Hey, I I'm only telling you the truth. They stopped here in a fancy big car, uh, looked around, then left. Zip was no longer here. Neither were the coppers, okay? Tiny Tim is a true fan of ours, and it's time to finally use that to our advantage. Did you talk to Wesley's man? Did you pay attention? How did Zip behave when they took him? I we hope your old pals. What was Zip doing before they took him away? Are you sure they were Wesley's goons? What was Zip doing for the... How did Zip... Okay, let's go. Let's go with the third one. Help your old pals, Tim. What was Zip doing before they took him away? Hey, you're trying to grease me up with all that sweet talk, Sonny Honey. Of course not, Tim Tim. We're old pals. I'm sure we are, but... I don't remember you telling me that without an ulterior motive. But you know what? I don't care. Feels good anyway. I'm glad to hear that. So... Zip was acting crazy. He was running around, knocking over everything, and throwing things away. Then he suddenly disappeared into the kitchen. I guess that's when he made the call. Because soon after that, the coppers arrived. And in between? Well, I didn't see him in between. Why didn't you go inside? He's your friend, isn't he? Well, I tried, Sonny. The door was closed. I, I knocked, even yelled. You know how a yelling seagull sounds like, <laughs> but nothing. I think I have a hunch what that was all about. Good for you, Sonny. Zip was hiding something in the dog. Zip was hiding something in the dog, right? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, you tell me. You're good old friends, aren't you? Well, that's right, Sonny, but Zip's not the kind to easily share his secrets. But now that you put it that way... That's more like it, Tim. Tell me, what do you know? Well, I don't know what it could be exactly. I mean, maybe it's not even relevant, but I'm sure Zip was trying to get rid of something when I arrived here. What and where? I don't know, okay? I, I already told you too much. If Zip hears about me telling you all this, he's never gonna talk to me again. Tim, unless we find Zip, he's not gonna talk to anyone ever again. Not in this life, at least. 
So, awesome! Nine questions asked, and focus accuracy at 100%. And we have an important clue, because Zip has been hiding something at a hop dog, and we must find it before it's too late! Okay, look, we've got quite a lot of extra information. Let's take a look at the clues. Nope, not this one. Okay. We have a rat that can only be Zip. Zip called the cops on himself and got them to take him him, him in, but why? Some, for most likely he's afraid of getting murdered by... He's afraid of getting murdered by the goons. Zip's hiding something in a hot dog. We must find it before it's too late. Hey, we've got that and out of the way. Let's try to find this Tim. Yep, here we go. And we have quite a lot of extra information today. Loud, annoying, and overly enthusiastic. And unfortunately, he's the number one fan of the chicken police. A real douche douchebag, a real nosy bastard, and an annoying little shit. But still, I have to admit, he's the best investigative reporter in Clawville. Back in the day, he had a big part in the chicken police becoming what we were for a long time. Real stars cops. Tim is a close friend of Zip, but not even he managed to find out what he, the old raccoon is up to. And Tim knew it happened to Zip very well, so, and he's most likely keeping our tabs on our actions too. Okay. And let's see if we have any more information about Zip. Small time criminal. Zip is getting old, he still has his connections, worth questioning him about everything. He was delivering information to Ibn up to a couple of years ago. He was already made me reporting to both sides. And he called the police on himself, but why? Was was he so afraid of something? Hey, we're gonna find out. Look at this mess. Looks like he was in a real hurry. Or was trying to erase his tracks. Because he was trying to hide something. But where? And most of all, what? Let's take a good look around. Okay, let's take a look. Let's look at the doodles here. Huh, what insight. Good question, pal. Where'd all the colors go? <laughs> and this maybe some cold coffee. I wouldn't dare touch that. Look at the menu, maybe. Eat garbage. Yeah, it's more Marty's kind of thing. Probably not. A case to Maeve, case to Maeve is probably. Let's take a look at the poster. Get over this whole mess. I'm gonna take you to a concert. No, you won't. Yes, I will. Swear. Yeah, well, good luck with that. You'll see. Just wait. All right. And maybe. Let's take a look at the door. Marty already looked through it. Nothing interesting. Menu, Marty. Doodles, cold coffee. Maybe the jukebox? You can probably listen to a couple of songs here. Listen to Natasha's song for a moment. Unfortunately, we can't really quite listen to it in the in the in the the hop dog itself. We actually have to stay on the jukebox just to. Just to listen to the songs. But or we can always buy the digital copy of the soundtrack. Available on the internet. I'll see if I can find a link and put it down in the description box below for you to support the artists and the game itself. Okay, let's see what else we can find. Let's talk to Marty for a little bit.
I think poor Marty just lost the last little bit of his sanity. Ay ay ay. Greetings, pal. What can I get you? What are you doing, Marty? A nice hot cup of coffee? Maybe some toast? Ooh, our strawberry jam pancake is divine. You must have hit your head pretty bad. Yes, sir. One coffee and a turbo milkshake with extra vanilla and millet powder coming right up. Ah, furry gods, help me. Please don't have a nervous breakdown, okay? Okay. Well, it seems that we... <laughs> we can't quite rely on Marty. I was thinking... Probably not. I'm going to... Let's see what else there is. We don't... We... The kingdom of dirty dishes and dull knives. And some trash. There's nothing behind the store, unfortunately. The menu, cold coffee, jukebox. Cold and moldy could be the motto of this place. We won't be getting anything from the coffee. Be here to take a look at the. Maybe we can take a look at the old car. They say an animal's just like his car. Does that mean I'm old and rusty? Well, you said it. What about you? You don't even have a license. That's just it. I'm special and fresh like a spring chicken. No, like a moron. Don't think there was anything in the car. Maybe we can take a look at the fly guy and speak to him. Hey, old pal. Could you help us? Does he understand us? I don't know. Uh, excuse me. Have you seen where the raccoon went? The one who owns the joint? Nothing. Yes, we can't get any help from... the fly guy. The warning sign, maybe? This sign summarizes the city's current attitude. Let's go back inside. Right now, probably not on the menu. Eat garbage. Yeah, it's more Marty's kind of thing. Let's see. What about yeah, more cold coffee? Maybe Cast and Mavis, or maybe we can talk to Marty again. Did you find something? Nothing. Or I mean, there's a lot of stuff here, but nothing important to us. A pity. Whatever that mangy raccoon tried to hide must still be here. Or not. Well, unfortunately, we can't seem to find anything at this point. Maybe take another look at the poster. Even looking at it makes me tired. Eat garbage. Eat garbage. Ah, yeah, yeah. Cold coffee. Take another look at the. He's hiding something at the hot dog. All right, now we are just probably stuck here for a little bit. Doodles. I was thinking of. Hmm. Nope. Going to be clicking on everything. Maybe the jukebox. Maybe the jukebox. That's something interesting. Oh! Look at this. I'm looking, but what the hell could it be? No idea, Marty. Guess it's best if we ask the owner himself. Where do we find him? Well, Timbo told us he's with even worse bastards than the one chasing him. That's it. The Parliament. No, Marty, but close. Then... No way. Oh, yes, Marty. Zip is at the Clawville City Police Department. 
Could it be that simple and that wild? Well, the cops took him. So it's obvious that he called the cops by himself to scare away Wessler's henchmen. Timbo was right. Doesn't he know half the police is in Wessler's pocket? He probably does, but this was his only chance. Uh, then he really is in big trouble. So? To the PD, then? Well, yep, I haven't got a better idea. Believe me, I'd love to have one. Nice. So, so all we did was just break the jukebox. Take the jukebox right here. And let's see what else what we've got. And we seem to have gotten this piece of paper. Why did you keep that wristband? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a wristband. Let's take a look at the clues that we've got here. A wristband, well, what the hell does it mean? Okay. Have you found what you were looking for? No, Timbo, but we wouldn't tell you even if we did. Ah, but you have. You are an open book to me, Sonny. So, uh, thanks for the intel. Be careful what you're writing, Timmy boy. I'm a cop for only the next 121 days. After that, I can gut you if I want and get away with it. And when did you being a cop stop you? He has a point. Just keep a low profile, okay, Timster? Okay, okay, I get it. My beak is sealed. Zoop. All right, so I'm going to be ending the session right here. Uh, when we come back, we'll be going over to the police department to have a talk with Zip, hopefully. And, uh, well, yes, the development here has been pretty interesting. And uh, we got to see Madame Zavas and her girls once again. <laughs> and come visit the brothel and visit Miss Diamond. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this session and I'll see you next time.